Hello, Mr. Malo here, your online math teacher. Welcome to my channel. Today, we're going to be continuing my video series, TI Tips, and in particular, looking at how to find a one-sample T interval or Z interval for population mean. So if you find this video helpful, consider smashing the like button, subscribing, and let's go. Now, this is all about finding confidence intervals. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our stats menu, and we're going to look at a few different ways to do this here. Um, they're all pretty much the same though. So I'll scroll to after I hit stat I scroll to the right to tests and then the two buttons I'm interested in are do I want a Z interval or do I want a T interval? The difference is going to be do you know the population standard deviation or not? Most of the time you are not going to know the population standard deviation So you are using a T interval in that case So if you do not know your population standard deviation you go to T interval and you can either select data or stats. If you select stats, it's going to prompt you to input what is that point estimate you're using to create, you want to use to construct your confidence interval. Maybe my maybe I'm looking at, say, mean test score, and maybe I sampled from a bunch of students and found that the average was an 80 for my point estimate, and I had a, standard, a sample standard deviation of 5, and maybe I sampled from 90 students, and I want my confidence interval to estimate, to try to look at this population mean to be maybe 0.95. Maybe I'm interested in 95% confidence. And I can just hit calculate, and I am good. It will spit out my confidence interval for me, and it will re-emphasize those three values here. So my point estimate, my sample standard deviation, and the no, and my sample size. Now, if I want to instead, if I don't necessarily start out just being given this type of information, maybe you're given data instead. Maybe I give you the sample test scores. Then you could scroll over to data here. And if I do that, it talks about list and frequency. So if I go to list one, and maybe list one is where I enter in my test scores. So say I could go to stat, edit, list one. Maybe I want these to be some test scores here. And we'll imagine that these are test scores. So this is clear not test scores here, but imagine this list one was my test score. So these would be pretty bad scores if it's out of 100. But then, when I go to my test menu and I go to my T interval, all I would do is enter, hey, here's the list where I stored my test scores. You can see frequency one. I want 95% confidence here, so I'll keep that at 0.95, and then I'll hit calculate, and it'll give me my 95% confidence interval. So maybe this was at 15 or something, maybe, I guess. Um, similarly, if you, instead of giving the raw data, maybe I gave a frequency table. So here, my first column is this list two. This is all the possible scores students could get. And list three is how many students actually obtain each of these scores. So the frequencies themselves. You could also calculate your one sample T interval here by replacing list one with list two, because that's where the values that are that students could have scored, and my frequency as list three, because this was the frequencies that correspond to list two. So, and I could calculate the same way here. It's just a different way to input your data into your calculator to give it back. So, these are the three ways you might end up using your T interval old button on your TI-84. Now, like I did say, there is Z interval, and you would use this if you know your population standard deviation. Most of the time you don't know that, but the only difference is if I want stats or data, it asks for one extra thing. Instead of asking for your sample standard deviation, it has a sigma here. Sigma means population. It's asking what is your population standard deviation. So you input that along with your point estimate and your sample size and your confidence interval, and you could calculate. Same thing if I'm then going to to use the stats, sorry, the um, data button 
in this z interval maybe i don't i'm not given these statistics but i was given data instead i need to enter in what my population standard deviation is and then i just need to tell it how am i entering my data am i entering it like a frequency table with list two as the possible values that can be taken on and list three as the frequencies or am i just entering the raw data from list one and keeping frequency at one here so if i did all that I could get my confidence interval using the Z interval. But it's all but most of the time you won't know your population standard deviation, so you'll just stick with those T interval buttons. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, hit like, subscribe, and have an awesome day.